there. I am Lu Ruirong from Communication University of Zhejiang. This is Chinese Bridge CUZ courses for traditional Chinese culture. I will tell you the stories of Gu Qin. There are two sessions. In the first session, I will introduce Gu Qin as an instrument. In the second session, I will introduce Gu Qin music to you. Let's enjoy. Generation in China get to know Gu Qin mostly from movies and TV series, especially those swordsman movies. On November the seventh, two thousand and three, Gu Qin was registered as an oral and intangible heritage of humanity of the UNESCO. This traditional Chinese musical instrument, with its beautiful music, elegant style. And the rich cultural connotation, closely related with Chinese history, philosophy, aesthetics, literature, and arts, is full of mystery and charm. Qin, chess, calligraphy, and painting are considered to be the major four arts of Chinese literati, among which. Qin ranks the first, with a history of more than three thousand years. It is the most ancient musical instrument in China. Hence, it is called Gu Qin. The prefix Gu, which means ancient, was added later for clarification. Gu Qin is a seven-stringed musical instrument of the zither family. Some people translated into seven-stringed Chinese lute, or simply Chinese lute, just because they thought Gu Qin to ancient China was what lute to ancient Europe. However, the style is quite different. This is lute. This is Gu Qin. The cultural connotation is quite different too. Gu Qin is considered to be Shen Wang Zhi Qi, instrument of the Holy Kings. Its music is called Tai Gu Yin, tones bequeathed by high antiquity. It is not only for self-entertainment, but also for self-cultivation. There are a lot of symbols around this instrument. The inventor of Gu Qin is considered to be Fu Xi, a legendary emperor around 3000 BC. With his supernatural power, Fu Xi had created and invented a lot of things, including hunting, fishing, and the domestication of animals. One day, when Fu Xi was in Yi Mountain, he saw two beautiful birds perching on one tree. The other birds flew toward them and sang songs together. Fu Xi realized the two birds are the legendary phoenix, which would perch on nothing except the phoenix tree. He believed that this must be the phoenix tree of spirit, and could be used to make instruments of ceremonial music. So he selected the middle part of the phoenix tree. Making the Yin principle complete the Yang principle, and creating the elegant music, calling it Qin. Qin means Jing, restraining. It is a means for cultivating the person and regulating the mind. It makes man return to what is truly of heaven in him. It makes him forget his earthly shape. And reunites him with emptiness. The spirit becomes concentrated, and melts into the great harmony. The whole body of Gu Qin corresponds the body of dragon or phoenix according to different legends and styles. Also, the body of Gu Qin looks like the human body, with head, neck, shoulder, waist, and feet, etc. This is the style of Fu Xi. It is around 120 centimeters. In Chinese measurement, it is three chi, six chun, 
and five fen, which symbolizes the three hundred and sixty-five days of the year. Chi, similar to foot in English, but the length is different. Cun, similar to inch, the length is different too. So here, I still use chi to explain the length. Its breadth is six cun, symbolizing the six harmonies, which refers to the heaven, the earth, and the four directions. It has an upper and a lower part, which symbolize the interchanging breadth of heaven and earth. The upper board is arched, symbolizing heaven. The low board is flat, designating earth. This is in accordance with the ancient Chinese belief that heaven is round and earth is flat. The front is broad, the back part is narrow, symbolizing the difference that exists between the venerable and the common. There are thirteen markers on the upper board, representing the thirteen months of Chinese lunar year. The markers are filled with shears, gold, silver, jade, or pearl, called hui. Hui means emblem. Here, it is used to indicate the sound position. The biggest hui represents the lunar month. When Fu Xi invented the Gu Qin, there were five strings originally, symbolizing the five elements. Metal, wood, water, fire, and earth, and corresponding to the five tones. Gong, Shang, Jue, Zhi, Yu. Gong is the prince. Shang is the statement. Jue. Is the people. Zhi stands for affairs, and Yu for things in general. When these five tones together depict the right, then the realm will be well regulated, and the numerous people will be peaceful. The two strings that were added later by King Wen and King Wu. So they are called Wen and Wu, and by their elegance, they express the decorous feelings between prince and statesman. Now, look at the upper part again. The upper bridge of the side is called Yue Shan, Mount Yue. The strings are fastened to the silk loops. Yue Shan refers to Tai Shan in Shandong Province, a symbol for immovability and aloofness. On the other hand, we can see the narrow, low bridge where the strings pass over the sounding box. It's called Long Ying, Dragon's Jumps. This part suggests the mouth of a dragon. The narrow space beneath Yue Shan is Feng E. Phoenix for it, and this narrow part is neck. Then it is the shoulder of the mortal. Both sides are called Feng Chi, Phoenix wings, because they resemble the straight wings of this bird. Let's move down, and this narrow part is called waist, and this part is called Jiao Wei, scorched tail. Why it is scorched? It's another story in the next session. Now come to the bottom one. Apart from Feng E, Feng She, and Yan Zu, we can see two sound holes. The larger one is Long Chi, the Dragon Pond. The smaller one is Feng Zhao, the Phoenix Pool. The dragon pond measures eight cun to let pass the winds of the eight directions. The phoenix pool measures for four cun 
to unite it in the four seasons. Pound means water, water is even. Pool means to submit. If the people on high are even, the people below will be obedient. So you can imagine when we play guqin, the music is like floating water. It flows from the high mountain along with the stream to the dragon pond and the phoenix pool and pour out of the dragon mouth. Dragon, phoenix, goose, mountain, water, all are important natural elements in Chinese culture. In Western culture, dragon stands for evil, but in China, it is the symbol of power. Dragon was considered to be the god for rainwater, which is of great significance for the ancient China because agriculture was the only base for economy. From Han Dynasty, Dragon was used to symbolize the power of the emperor and the kingdom. If you go to the imperial palace, you will see a lot of symbols of dragon. If the dragon symbolizes the emperor, phoenix symbolizes the queen. In Chinese culture, phoenix is a legendary bird which will bring happiness and luck. The singing of the phoenix is said to inspire the ancient Chinese to form the basic musical tones. Goose, symbolizing loyalty, is also connected with longing, missing, and melancholy. From here you can see Gu Qing concentrates the hope, personal feeling, natural and cultural understanding of ancient Chinese people. In ancient China, music is important to human beings and to kingdoms. With the influence of the accomplished music on man, his nature is made to return to the right. Prince and statesmen shall be righteous. Parents and children shall love each other. Falsehood and low desires disappear, and man returns to his truly heaven nature. Therefore, by contemplating the lute and by listening to its music, one may behold the disposition of people and the condition of government, and one may know whether in the world the way flourishes or is decaying. There are a lot of legends about Gu Qin. So there are a lot of styles of Gu Qin. The second style of Gu Qin is made by Shen Nong, the second legendary emperor in China. Shen Nong was also the legend god for farming, who was supposed to have invented the plow and discovered the curative virtues of plants. This is Shen Nong style, and this is Zhong Ni style. Zhong Ni, Confucius. The most famous and influential philosopher and educator in ancient China, he is the founder of Confucianism and called the Sage. The style is simple and implicit, embodying the golden means of Confucian school. Zhong Ni style is the most common one. Let's enjoy other styles of Gu Qin. This is Shi Kuang style. Shi Kuang. An amazing court musician of Jin State of Spring and Autumn period, he was blind but very sensitive, good at examining acoustic and adjusting musical temperament. He could judge whether this music was harmful to the government or not. When he played Gu Qin, horses would halt and birds would gather around him. This is Lin Ji style. Lin Ji style was created in Han Dynasty and had been popular since then. This is Ru Qi style, also connected with a famous Gu Qin player, Sima Xiangru. This is Luo Xia style. The edge is a bit special. This style is said to be inspired by the sunset in Han Dynasty. This is Lian Zhu style. Lian Zhu means wonderful things will be connected with good men. It was created in Sui Dynasty. This is Xuanghe style. This is new compared with the above-mentioned styles. 
It was designed by the Emperor Hui Zong in Song Dynasty. He was a good choreographer and created a style of choreography. This Guqing style has something in common with his choreography, slim but sturdy. The simplest one is Zhenghe style, just a simple street box. It's from Ming Dynasty. This is Jiao Ye style with a shape of banana leaf. It might be the most difficult one because it needs very elaborate manual work. It's created by Liu Bowen from Ming Dynasty. Liu was a great politician and strategist. Banana leaves appeared in everyday life of the Asian China and also in literary works. Jiao Ye style is very elegant and it becomes one of the favorite styles of Gu Qin players. This is Hun Dun style. Maybe it's one of the newest styles of Gu Qin. Similar to Luo Xia style, we cannot judge where is the neck and the waist. From different styles of Gu Qin, we can see the development of Chinese history. We can see those who created made them and played them. That's why in China, it is the habit of the emperors or wealthy people to collect Guqing. They consider the Guqing as a precious antique which should be stored and cherished forever. If we merely see Guqing as a musical instrument, the body is just a sounding box with two boards with special wood superimposed one upon the other. The upper board is made of tong wood, similar to candlenut wood, which is called phoenix tree. The lower part is made of zi wood, similar to cultivar wood. Nowadays, Chinese fur is usually used to replace the material. No matter what kinds of wood are applied, they should be old and dry. That's why the materials are usually taken from the old temple and the house, even the decaying coffee. In order to make Guqing with beautiful sound, people will go to high mountain into the deep forest to find out suitable wood. Fanciful associations also play a role. One may find a cedar in a remote temple all over the bambling water in high mountains or a secluded valley. So there are also a lot of stories of the making of Guqing. I just mentioned the Jiao Wei, Scorched Tail. This is a story of Cai Yong. One day, he heard somebody burning a log of tong wood for their cooking. The cracking sound is quite different, he said. This will be the right material for making qin. So he asked whether he might have the log and made one gu qin from it. However, at one end, there was the marks of the burning. So he called this gu qin jiao wei, scorched tail. Nowadays, most gu qin's tail is made or painted differently to imitate the scorched tail. To judge the value of an ancient Guqing, two criteria should be mentioned. One is the condition of the lacquer. The other is the inscription it bears. Lacquering is important. If you look at them, you will see the lacquer are different. There are different color and patterns. If you have a look in person, you can see the delicate difference among different Guqing. Lacquer on Guqing often develops a pattern of fine cracks after long periods of use and exposure to the atmosphere. Under normal conditions, such cracks do not appear at least two to three centuries. When they do appear, they are at first very faint, but they gradually become deeper and more numerous. These cracks are not harmful to the sound, on the contrary, they are greatly admired for their beauty and testify the age of the instrument. 
So today, many guqi makers will try to copy these cracks on their new instrument. Guqing is a musical instrument, but more than a musical instrument. Not every Chinese scholar was good at playing guqing. However, owning one was of great significance to them. The predilection of the Chinese scholar for the romantic and the fanciful also found expression in Guqin. As regard to the inscriptions of Guqin, they can be divided into two kinds, those inside the sounding box and those on the bottom part. The inside inscriptions mostly state the date, the name of the builder or the rebuilder. They are mostly written in ordinary Chinese characters. The outside inscriptions are usually elegant and tasteful according to the scholars who use them. The simplest inscription is merely the name of the Skuqin. The names are beautiful, elegant, and full of meaning, showing one's love for nature, one's loneliness, emptiness, melancholy, and aspiration. For example, spring thunder, singing bear, echo of a goose cry, singing jade, dragons growing, lonely, dry angel tree, snow on the pines, preserving antiquity. And this is Yi Ru, endless music. Yi Ru is from Beijing. The name of Yi Ru is engraved above the dragon pond. Here is the origin of the name of Yi Ru. It's taken from the Anicolacts of Confucius, and it is a more normal inscription. Classical quotation. Apart from it, on the bottom part of other Guqin, you can see different inscriptions. Some are lines of poetry, appreciative essays, impressions of seals, etc. Now, let's have a look at the most ancient Guqin in China. The name is Jiu Xiao Huan Pei. It was made in Tang Dynasty. Fu Xi style. Jiu Xiao refers to the heaven. Huan Pei refers to the tinkling adornment on one's belt. Jiu means nine. It's the biggest number, symbolizing the highest, so it is usually connected with the emperor. From the name, we can see the significance of this qin. There are many inscriptions on the bottom part. The name is engraved in Xiao Zhuan, a style of calligraphy adopted in the Qing dynasty for the purpose of standardizing the script. There is time of building. It's about 715 AD. The right side of the dragon pond is Xing Shu, semi-cursive script. The left side is Kai Shu, regular script of Chinese characters. We can see it was written by Huang Tingjian, a famous poet in Northern Song Dynasty. Below the dragon pond, there is a seal, Bao Han meaning including everything. Under the seal, there is a poem written by Su Shi, an influential poet and painter in Northern Song Dynasty. Another Gu Qin need mentioning is Hai Yue Qing Hui, bright light of the sea moon. Hai Yue Qing Hui is made in Song Dynasty, Zhongni style. It's precious because the material used to make is special. The Hui marker is filled with gold. The tuning packs and the goose feet are made of jade. On the top, you can see slight cracks, which indicates the age of this instrument. On the back part, above the dragon pond, we can see the name of it, Hai Yue Qing Hui. Below the name, there is a seal of Emperor Qianlong. Then you can see different inscriptions written by seven people. 
They were all subjects to the emperor. From the inscriptions and the seal, we can see the relationship among the emperor and his subjects. Hai Yue Qinghui, together with Jiu Xiao Huan Pei, shows us that this musical instrument is the combination of different types of Chinese culture. There are so many famous precious Gu Qin I want to introduce to you. Here, I would like to introduce another precious Gu Qin made in Tang Dynasty around 765 AD. Its name is Da Shen Yi Ying, the voice of the great sage. Tang Dynasty witnessed the development of Gu Qin building. Those passed down here today are proved to be very precious instruments. Da Shen Yi Ying is of Shen Nong style. Hui markers are filled with gold. There are beautiful cracks on the top. The dragon pond is round, a bit different from normal things. The name of Da Sheng Yi Ying was engraved in Cao Shu, cursive script, another type of Chinese character. On both sides of the dragon pond, the inscription is Li Shu, official script, an ancient style of calligraphy since the Han Dynasty. Below the dragon pond, there is a seal, Bao Han, meaning including everything. Da Sheng Yi Ying was collected by the imperial families from dynasty to dynasty. In 1947, it was discovered by Mr. Wang Shi Xiang, an expert of cultural relics. It was forgotten by people for a long time and was in a very bad condition. Dusty, stringless. Once spent all his money buying it, and Mr. Guan Ping Hu, one of the best Gu Qin players in China, helped repair this instrument. With his effort, Da Sheng Yi Ying restored its charm. The story of Da Sheng Yi Ying is not unique. Actually, in the long period of history, cultural relics disappeared one by one. If we would not protect them, one day we would lose them forever. That's why today we try every means to excavate them and restore their beauty. The meaningful name of Gu Qin, the different style of calligraphy, the works of different scholars in different historical periods, just as floating water passed down with history. Their stories are told and retold Thus, the culture handed down two generations. Gu Qin, with all those stories, becomes extremely valuable cultural heritage. <laughs>